I was pleasantly surprised when Ann Friedman allowed me to meet with her on the last day of the Notre Dame Gallery's existence. I asked her if the gallery's 165-year history would be forever defined by this latest scandal, and she said, oh, absolutely not. And I just thought, wishful thinking. One of their customers was actually suing Nodler, its president, Ann Friedman, for $17 million, which he had paid for a painting supposedly by Jackson Pollock. And there you've got one of those Pollocks from Nodler on your wall. Not only that, there may be a whole parade of paintings by any number of artists. So is the painting I bought, is it real or is it fake? And then you start to panic. And this was sort of the Pandora's box of what really brought the whole, eventually brought the whole scam crashing down. They all tracked back to Glafira Rosales, this Long Island dealer who most of us in the art world had never heard of before. Two women, depending on how you look at it, they were like the stars of the biggest art scandal, certainly of this century. Every sale was more and more lucrative, and so I can imagine they sort of reverse roles. It's the victim or the villain, I mean, that's another conundrum. What was going on in Anne Friedman's head? Did she think deep down that those paintings were authentic, or did she not? And you have to remember, she really was the queen bee of the art world. That this happened at Nodler was really just a testament that something like this could happen anywhere. No matter how hard the gallery tried, there could be no provenance because they were being painted in Queens. You know, we shouldn't be surprised that forgeries are out there because the art market, which is even more out of control than it's always been, and it's always been out of control, needs merchandise, it needs stock. It can't move forward unless there's stock. To pull off a forgery like this, it takes a village. And it's not just the misdealings of one gallery or one dealer. The art world lacks transparency. 